Hi, welcome to another episode of Northern State of Mind, the show that aims to foster a conversation of mental health topics here in the North while reducing the stigma of those afflicted with mental health conditions. On today's episode, a visit with the Arctic Indigenous Wellness Foundation at their camp in Yellowknife, a guest who shares her own lived journey with borderline personality disorder, as well as other insights into mental health topics in our northern communities. But up first, we visited with Tiffany Tassane at the Mental Health Association of the Yukon to learn what that organization has been up to recently. My name is Tiffany Tassain, and I'm the Executive Director of the Mental Health Association of Yukon. We are a not-for-profit charitable organization. The programs that we run are all evidence-based, and they're in partnership with the Canadian Mental Health Association or the Mental Health Commission of Canada. The main programs that we're running at the Mental Health Association of Yukon are the Living Life to the Full program, which is a psychoeducational cognitive-based therapy group program. It is for individuals with um, low mood, so a mild depression, mild anxiety. It is a group, so the group meets once a week. It is not a therapy program. It is a program that provides uh, tools to manage low mood and to help reestablish the way that you approach things in life. So the Mental Health Works program, which is for employers predominantly, managers and supervisors, um, is really an awareness program around what mental health is, why it's important to consider it in the workplace, and to start to look at how you notice people, intentionally noticing and having some of the challenging conversations when you do notice change in people. We generally do several offerings a year for the general public, but employers can also call us to arrange uh, a time and we can chat about what their needs are and, and uh, set them up. So we're really excited to be able to offer a Headstrong Summit this fall. Headstrong is a youth anti-stigma program where we bring youth together for a day in a summit. We do a number of activities with them. We have speakers with lived experience. We talk about stigma. Then those youth go back to their schools and throughout the rest of the school year, they lead anti-stigma initiatives and campaigns, however they want to do that, from a postering campaign to a peer support group to a car wash to raise funds for an organization. Whatever they want to do, they have ownership of that. There are lots of ways to be involved with the Mental Health Association. We are always looking for members um, and we're also always looking for volunteers. Uh, we're looking for volunteers in many capacities from you know, helping man a table at the market or at an event to assisting us with some of our programming. We are always looking for people who want to take part and help out. If you want to find out more about the Mental Health Association, you can drop by our office. We're in the Horwoods Mall upstairs. Uh, you can call or email us anytime. We have a Facebook page and we have a website as well. So there's lots of different ways. Or just find us at, when we're out in the public, working at a resource table, talk to our board members, talk to our volunteers. Donald Prince, uh, Executive Director, CEO of the Arctic Indigenous Wellness Foundation. We have this camp here to help people in the community, whether that be uh, counseling, traditional medicine, traditional ceremony, those kinds of things. A lot of people come out here just uh, to hang out, to talk, talk with the elders or talk with myself or William or Ruth. Uh, sometimes individuals come, sometimes couples, sometimes families. My name is Bessa Blondin, and I come from Delina. I am the elder uh, of the camp. I work here to, uh, to help people in counseling, and I also help people in healing. One of the big things that we look at is trying to meet people where they're at, you know? If, uh, for example, the Western-based counseling generally says, well, you come in for one hour a week or something like that. And then if you miss your appointment, well, too bad, you can't come in. There, we, we ask people to come out here every day uh, if they want, you know, drop in anytime. If you want to make an appointment, we can do that too. 
I always ask advice with elders. How can we help our people? And they say the only way you can do that is bring that cultural values back so that they can be proud of who they are. And, and they're not the modern society people, they are cultural people and with incredible, incredible way of life. And that is what we look at implementing uh, when we start to build Arctic Indigenous Wellness Foundation. Our counseling, I guess, is done while we're doing something, you know. We might be building something, and there's a couple of guys out doing and building things with them. And they stop for a couple minutes and say, you know what? And they start telling me something about what happened with them in their childhood, from some really negative experience they've had. And we'll talk about so we'll take a break and we'll talk about that for a while, you know, and then carry on and then check in with them later, you know, how are you feeling about that? What's happened to you is that it's not your fault. But what you have to do is to look at yourself. We're going to put a place out here for you. You can come over here anytime, eat traditional foods. But I always tell them that it's, it's you yourself inside your heart. If you want that change, that's up to you to make that change. But we're here to help you the best we can. But we don't tell you how, how to live your life, but we tell you how you could be living this life even with more healthiness and more wellness and the best you can be. One of the things that the, when you go to counseling is that they ask you, okay, well, what happened to you at residential school? And we don't ask them that here. We don't want to know all the bad things in their life. Uh, let's talk about something good, you know. If we're going to talk about your experiences as a child, what was good about it, you know? What did you learn from your dad or your mom or grandparents or whatever on the land or hunting or whatever, you know? What is good? And help them to look at the, some positive things in their life. And uh, from there, people will open up after a while. You know, they'll talk about different things and Sometimes we'll push them a little bit, you know, but only if it seems like it's they're ready or it's where we have the safety of the of the people here or the camp to do that. This camp is to help you reconnect with your families also, so that they can have all the tools that you just learned, and you need to pass that on. I said everything we teach you here, you can keep that for yourself. You need to pass it on to somebody else that you can help heal. The experience of our life that we've gone through, it's an experience of, of life, but there's answers to healing. There's answers to counseling. There's answers for treatment. There's answers for aftercare, for whatever you want to put in place so you can get better even much more. This is why I said we, we have this camp. We're bringing back your tradition, your way of life, so that you can get even much more connected, not only with us, but connected with the people. And you can help the people on the street. You can help the people that are homeless. You can help people that are struggling because you went through that yourself. That's the greatest education you have. And from here on, you help them with that tool of healthiness now because now the people will see you and, and you will be standing tall and people will come to you. And all you have to do is hug them and tell them how much you love them and how much you care and that you're there to help them. That's all you have to say. And that will bring happiness to them and to make that change. We're on Facebook and we have, uh, we're behind the field house. In the far right corner of the parking lot, you'll see a sign. Just come on down that path. And we're open from 9 to 5 every day in the weekdays, sometimes on the weekends. But if you check our Facebook, you'll see we, we update when we do certain events on weekends or, or in the evenings in town. Uh, we'll do certain, certain things in like social events in town. And then we do things on Saturdays out here sometimes. And, but you'll find it on the Facebook. My name is Stephanie Padfield. Uh, I live in Whitehorse, Yukon, and I am a massage therapist and yoga teacher here. 
I have a mental health condition known as borderline personality disorder, uh, or more commonly known as BPD. It's been something that I've struggled with my entire life and I am hoping to raise a little bit of awareness about it. BPD is a, a disorder rooted in severe emotional dysregulation, which puts you into extreme states of distress uh, more often than not. Well, after uh, kind of finding my way out of the healthcare system and into privatized care, I found a therapy called DBT, or Dialectical Behavioral Therapy. It's one of the only effective forms of treatment there are really right now for BPD. There's a lot of things that go along with the dysregulation and the distress. Uh, the model of DBT is based out of emotional regulation and uh, distress tolerance, mindfulness, all of those kind of core pieces. People can experience all sorts of different symptomology with this disorder. It presents differently in everyone, which is part of the reason it's so hard to treat. I've been doing this therapy for about seven years now. It helps you accomplish some separation between you and the feelings and thoughts that you have every day. It's based in the CBT model of how thoughts affect emotions, affect behavior, um, and how that cycle kind of feeds into itself and, and how you can kind of intervene in places that are meaningful and create a better experience for yourself. I uh, started doing yoga on recommendation of one of my uh, DBT therapists about four to five years ago at this point. There is a lot of similarity and overlay in the mindfulness pieces of yoga as well as the kind of separation from self and mind and body. Recognizing that they're three separate things and that they don't have to affect one another and at the same time that they do affect one another. The basis of yoga is, is very similar to the basis of DBT in that you can relate to the world and experience the world in really any way that you want if you can understand uh, how to separate those, those three core pieces of yourself and essentially observe them instead of letting them um, control or consume your experience. I today do yoga for myself. For me, it's, it's definitely a core piece to how I function every day, and I have started teaching it for two main reasons. One being that as a borderline with the fluctuations of how you feel about everything, I find that I need to have things incorporated and woven into my life. I obviously want to share it with everybody and try to give everybody the chance to feel how they can really feel the best versions of themselves and it's not even about being happy or being sad all the time, it's about achieving balance and contentment and being okay with yourself and accepting of others. The stigma surrounding borderline is pretty extreme. Uh, if you do a quick Google search of borderline, generally you'll see a whole bunch of pretty horrible things. But because they're generally presented in a very extreme and intense way, they come off uh, to the public uh, as very differently than kind of where they're coming from underneath, which makes it very misunderstood and, and hard to understand. The best thing I can say about it is just try to think about what people are experiencing when you're in a situation with them as opposed to judging the situation and judging them because you never really know what's going on underneath. Um, and with my experience, more often than not, people aren't coming from a malicious uh, place, uh, especially not consciously or not purposefully. Uh, they're generally reaching out or hurt or need acceptance or love and it's, it's our job as a society to um, come together and hold each other up and be a community and that's how we're going to get through this. Well, that's it for this episode of Northern State of Mind. If you have any comments or suggestions of topics you'd like to see on the show, feel free to contact us. 
For more information on the Mental Health Association of the Yukon or the Arctic Indigenous Wellness Foundation, you can check out their Facebook pages and websites. Until next time on Northern State of Mind, I'm Chris McNutt. Thanks for joining us.